Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to MIG Monday. You know, in, in the MIG welding process, there's a lot of talk about amps, volts, stick out. There's a lot of electrical terms. And a lot of people don't necessarily know what the significance of these different things are. Uh, what we've got here today is a, uh, a mechanized setup because uh, the human hand, mine in particular, gets a little shaky sometimes. So we're going to do a demonstration about uh, voltage and travel speed and things of that nature. Uh, and by taking the human area out of it and using a mechanized system, uh, we can compare apples to apples. Basically what we're going to do is, is stress uh, stick out, what happens as your stick out varies. Um, bear in mind that the current is applied to the wire at the contact tip, okay? So when you have a, a setting on your machine of, of voltage and wire feed speed, the wire feed speed is controlled by the machine. The voltage comes into play at the contact tip. Now, everybody I think has heard of voltage drop. You know, if you're using a long extension cord, you don't get as much voltage as you do if you have a short extension cord. It's kind of the same thing here. Um, it might be a little bit of an over oversimplification, but at, as you have maybe this much wire if sticking out of the end of the contact tip, you're gonna have a given voltage. Um, when you have more, now you've got resistance, and so the voltage available at the arc itself is going to be less. And also the current is going to be less. When we're going to see as we go here, I'm going to start out at a too short of arc length, and then I'm going to kind of raise it up, and then raise it up to, uh, to the correct amount, and then raise it up beyond where it ought to be. And we'll see some changes in the bead profile. Uh, the more voltage that's available at the arc is uh, going to widen out the bead. And as you get less and less voltage, in other words, more and longer and longer stick out, uh, the bead is going to become ropey and uh, not a very nice appearing bead at all. Uh, while we're doing that, as you pay attention to the display on the machine, uh, once you know it's going to have a voltage and, and wire feed speed display, but once I turn the machine on and start the arc, that display switches to actual amps and volts, and you'll be able to see uh, what happens with the uh, amperage. It's going to just go, as I increase the stick out, it's going to be less and less and less. And that equates to heat input. And that's why the bead becomes more crowned and more ropey because you're not having enough heat in there to spread it out. So that's kind of in a nutshell what we're going to do. Uh, the best thing to do is just get to it and, and show you what I've been talking about. All right, let's do it. Okay, so this is our mechanized setup. But what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to travel at 12 inches a minute. The human air has been re removed from this. Uh, I'm starting out with a stick out that's too short. Uh, as I weld, I'm going to weld th two or three inches. And after that's done, I'm going to increase the stick out. Uh, when I do those changes, you should hear it. You should be able to see it in the display on the machine over here as the changes in the amperage and voltage. Uh, the voltage will pretty much stay the same, but the amperage will, level will start to go down. And when we're all done and we look at the weld bead, you should be able to see some subtle differences in the weld also. So if we're ready to go, we're going to start. All right, so now what we're at is a proper height. Got a nice bead going here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the up, raise the my gun up a little bit will increase the stick out. You can hear a difference in the sound. We're running some risks of, of other weld problems. But I think we've made the point, so I'm going to kill it now. So what we have, once we have a high stick out like that, you know, you're, you're opening yourself up to problems besides weld bead shape. Uh, if you can, when we zoom in on this, you'll see that, that the weld has gone from a pretty nice shape to a kind of a rounded shape. Uh, and the other issue that you can start to have with a bigger stick out is then gas coverage because the gas that's coming out of the cone has to travel further down to the plate to protect the molten pool. And, and it also becomes, you know, not only a matter of how much distance it has to travel, it also becomes more susceptible to any small breezes that might be around where you're welding. It makes it even that much easier to blow the shielding away. Okay, that concludes the demonstration for today. Hopefully you've now recognized the importance of stick out and what can happen if you vary it too much either direction. 
Um, I want to give some special thanks to Bugo Systems for letting me use the Gopher 4 uh, mechanized system here to take out the human trivialities of making this weld and get everything very consistent. And also to Zyrus Automation for the use of their high dynamic range weld camera that they provided all the weld pool shots that you saw. So special thanks to everybody and I think that pretty much wraps up this week's issue. So see you next time on Big Monday. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every Mig Monday. Now, actually, this is way too short, and you can see it's really horrible. And I'm going to start increasing my wire feed speed now, maybe up to about where, not my wire feed speed, but my stick out. And cut, we have a problem. <laughs>